thanks for the introduction. Uh, uh, I'm very excited to be here to present our work, Understanding Open Ports in Android Applications, Discovery, Diagnosis, and uh, Security Assessment. Uh, I'm Dao Yuan Wu, a PhD candidate from Singapore Management University. This is a joint work with Durbin and Robert from SMU, Loki and uh, Eric from Hong Kong Polytechnic University and He from China Electronic Technology Cyber Security Company. Mobile apps reside in client-side smartphones. They send traffic to remote servers for data communication. But could you imagine that many Android apps also contain open ports? Uh, for contain open ports, a port is regarded as open if it is listening for incoming packets and potentially respond to them. However, such port opens a new door for adversaries to launch attacks, for example, steering private files through a HTTP request or injecting malicious codes for execution. To systematically understand open ports in Android apps and their threats, the first step is to uh, discover them. Static analysis was taken by our previous work for automatic vetting of open ports. However, typical Android static analysis still suffers from dynamic code loading, compressed implicit flows, and advanced code obfuscation. Dynamic analysis has no such issues, but the traditional in-lab dyna dynamic analysis cannot uh, mimic real user inputs to trigger open ports. It also cannot determine fixed and, and random port numbers across different devices. Therefore, in this, our work, we propose a crowdsourcing-based approach which leverages users' interaction with their smartphones to monitor open ports from each individual phone in the world. We have designed and deployed a crowdsourcing app called NetMon for on-device open port monitoring. Here shows its two major user interface, where you can see it can capture open ports from other applications. For example, here we can see the uh, open ports used by nearby service, which was just uh, pr presented previously. And uh, we also show detailed monitoring records to our users. So how exactly um, NetMon can monitor other apps' open ports without the root permission? Directly probing them from other applications is infeasible on Android because of the app sandbox. Fortunately, there is a side interface on the broker files that provi provides us the socket table information in the kernel space. So here we show several sample loads of this uh, TCP profile, where you can pinpoint the open port through a special socket status, CROA, and uh, identify corresponding application names through user ID, and further determine uh, IP address and port number information. Note that such um, a TCP and a UDP socket uh, pro profile is accessible on all versions of Android, including the latest Android 8 and 9. In real deployment, we need to periodically analyze those, those four protocol files because there is no mechanism to notify us when the contents of these protocol files gets changed. In the paper, we also mention several mechanisms we have leveraged to minimize the overhead of such periodic port monitoring. Compared, compared to other app-based crowdsourcing, there is one unique challenge in our open port crowdsourcing, that is the collect collected raw records cannot be directly analyzed because they are just individual observations, while we must know the app open port results for the analysis. For example, we need to tell Netflix has 
to fix the port number which can be recognized from these records. It also has a random port number that can be unified from these uh, different records. This might look obvious here to a human, but when you face millions of records and require a machine to process them, we need an intelligent engine that can automatically cluster raw port monitoring records to per app open port results. Our analytic engine performs a three-step clustering. First, we aggregate raw records into different groups according to IP address and uh, port types. After that, in each group of a given application, we further calculate the user percentage information associated, associated with each port number. A high user percentage indicates a fixed port number, while a low percentage indicates a random port number. However, there are still some undetermined ones in between the high and low percentage. Therefore, we further propose several uh, heuristics based on the port distribu distribution to further classify open port records into per app open port results. We have deployed NetMon to Google Play for an IRB approved crowdsourcing study and uh, have collected a large scale crowdsourcing data set. In the paper, we report the 10 months data, which includes 14 million port monitoring records from more than 3,000 users. In particular, we discovered more applications with TCP open ports as compared to the previous work that already used a large app set for static analysis, let alone uh, the UDP open ports they didn't cover at all. Moreover, we showed that up to 25% of uh, apps use dynamic or obfuscated codes for the open port functionality. To further quantify the perverseness of open ports in popular applications, we correlate our crowdsourcing results with top 3,000 applications from Google Play and found the perverseness, perverseness is around 50 10%. In particular, we identified open ports in a large number of popular applications that has one million installs each. We, here we list some uh, representative open port applications from different Google categories. We can see that some high profile applications such as Facebook and Instagram are also not free of open ports. Beyond popular applications, we even identify open ports in many built-in system applications. Here, uh, this table lists the top 10 device vendors that include open ports apps in their device. We have several major findings here. First, more than half of these built-in apps contain this uh, UDP open port 68, which is actually for uh, receiving DHCP broadcast. And uh, this open port uh, will leak the host name to any connecting party, which was only fixed until Android age. One quarter of these built-in apps have uh, this particular port number open, which is actually for the VOIP SIP connection setup. Moreover, we further identify some device, device vendors will modify Android AOSP applications to include some particular open ports. Uh, this device, uh, such as those in Samsung, LG, and the Xiaomi device. While crowdsourcing is effective in discovering open ports, it does not reveal the code level information for more in-depth understanding or diagnosis. Therefore, we further perform static analysis to understand how open ports are actually constructed at the code level and its security implications. So given a server socket API core, we have two uh, objectives here. 
first we want to trace the entire core hierarchy to uh, determine whether an open porch is actually introduced by SDKs. Second, we perform data flow analysis to determine uh, insecure open porch parameters. So for the first diagnosis, we analyzed this number of open TCP open port applications and found that 60% of them are surely due to SDKs, in which the Facebook SDK is the major contributor. Totally, we detected 13 open port SDKs uh, as shown in this table. For the rest of applications whose open ports are not introduced by SDK, we further diagnose their API usage. And we found that uh, around 70% of them adopt the convenient API usage. That is, they, they, they didn't uh, set the IP address parameter or simply set it as a non-parameter, which makes Android where by default uh, bound these open ports to the host IP address that can be remotely access accessed. And uh, 120 apps of this uh, convenient API usage actually set their port numbers parameters are random port numbers, so which means these open ports are not designed for a remote party to connect, only for the local usage. Therefore, we conclude that 20% of open port applications adopt convenient but insecure API usage. In the last phase of our pipeline, we perform three novel security assessments of open ports. First, we identify five vulnerability patterns in open ports. I have already uh, mentioned the first two in the beginning slides. So for the third one, it is a new variant of the traditional app crash, uh, but uh, this new uh, attack does not rely on the application data anymore. For example, an attacker can simply terminate ongoing Skype sessions by sending just two UDP packets. Or uh, a local malicious application can crash Instagram by sending just a HTTP request to, its op to the Instagram's open port. We further uh, develop a new vulnerability pattern uh, called DLC uh, data infraction. In this attack, the adversary can send a t HTTP request pointing to a large file in order to maliciously infiltrate victim application's cellular data in the background. Furthermore, we found that some open ports are used as an analytics engine for their campaign websites. However, such analytic open port is fundamentally insecure because any connecting party can set the correct HTTP referral to bypass the checking. Besides individual vulnerabilities, we further demonstrate the effectiveness of a generic gen general denial of service attack against mobile open ports. As you can see here, uh, once a DOS attack is launched, the throughput of WeChat's voice call, YouTube's video streaming, and Android's file transmission can drop significantly. In order to launch remote open port attacks for the previous vulnerabilities and uh, denial of service, a victim device must be, uh, connect, must be connected either in the same network or even from different networks. We therefore further leverage NetMon to test whether a device can connect to another in real user networks using three kinds of packets, the pin, TCP, and UDP packets. And uh, totally, we connect, collected these numbers of network scan trace from, from more than 200 cellular networks and more than uh, 2,000 Wi-Fi networks. And we found that ha half, around half of these cellular networks and uh, over 8% of Wi-Fi networks allow the inter-device connectivity in the same network. For example, if you are using uh, a, a same uh, 
cellular ISP with another user, you can, you can send traffic to his or her smartphone. We further found that 23 cellular networks and uh, uh, 10 Wi-Fi networks even allow the inter-network connectivity from the internet because those uh, networks are assigning the public IP address to their uh, uh, user device. To conclude, we here are several takeaways of my talk. First, we propose the first open port analysis pipeline that covers discovery, static, uh, discovery diagnosis, and uh, security assessment. Our crowdsourcing find open ports in many popular applications and also in built-in built applications. We further perform static analysis to diagnose uh, many uh, TCP open ports are caused by uh, third-party SDKs. We further perform comprehensive security assessments, including vulnerability analysis in popular applications, denial of service uh, experiments, and the real connectivity measurement. Thank you for listening. I'm now ready to take your questions. Sorry. Um, so Alfred Chen, UC Irvine. So uh, this is interesting work. Um, so um, this open power problem ha so have been studied by um, the multiple uh, yeah, like um, research. Yeah. So do you think this is a fundamental the problem? So how easy do you think it is to fix them? Are these just bugs or these are some just some design uh, principles that just make some, um, um, basically their existence is due to some trade-offs instead of just bugs? Okay, I, th I think in some cases they, they they are bugs, actually. The developers overuse such open port functional open port for their functionality that they can originally avoid using open ports. So, so but for other cases, say for uh, file transmission, etc., they do require the open ports. So, in some cases, these are bugs, but in other cases, it is hard to pre. Uh, avoid such usage. Right. I, I'm actually I'm particularly interested in the Skype and, and the Instagram case. So Inst did you yeah did you um, like report to their yeah. team and do, do you know why they open parts? Okay, so we have a uh, content uh, report uh, Facebook SDK and the Instagram cases to Facebook and uh, they 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 confirmed our reports with uh, two bug bounties hmm. and uh, uh, so uh, because such. Uh, in such attacks, uh, we do require some uh, attack conditions that uh, uh, only a um, local malicious application can launch the data infraction attack. So the CRS is not as, as serious as other open port attacks. Thanks. So I have a question. Um, given that there are a couple of papers on this topic, um, why do you think people still keep doing it? Uh, you, you mean keep doing in keep, this? Keep opening ports. OK. Uh, I, think, I think countries, uh, so maybe it's first, first of all, I think there is a uh, gap between academic research and the real world developers. So, so, so actually, many developers don't know uh, their apps actually are opening ports. They just use uh, to finish their app, uh, finish their functionality, no matter what kind of way they they are using. So an another issue is, I think, I think, uh, so for the operating system Android, they may. You, you, because many open ports are used for sharing data, even for the inter process sharing. So I think uh, Google can give more security guideline to developers to, to, to tell them in, say, in some cases you, you, know, you don't need to use open ports, you can use other mechanism to share da data with up other applications. That's a good point, we should let Google know. Okay. Uh, well, so any other questions? Uh, 
This is Louis from uh, Indiana University Bloomington. Okay. So after you report the open path in Facebook SDK to Facebook, so did they close the path in the SDK? Uh, so I think they, they, they add some, because uh, the open post in Facebook SDK and uh, Instagram also exist in YouTube, but YouTube has some defense mechanism that leverages some uh, signature uh, uh, based checking. So, so it will check whether this package is, uh, the integrity of this package is coming from a trusted party. So I think they face, uh, we didn't test it, uh, we didn't retest it, but I guess Facebook SDK didn't close it, but instead use some defense mechanism. So, so based, on the res based on the response that you got from Facebook, did they plan to close the part or they have legitimate use case for their SDK to have those parts still open? Okay, so for the Facebook SDK cases, the open port is actually for uh, for a proxy catching of uh, video based uh, advertisements, so that's why the, it it exists in Facebook uh, advertisement SDK. So I think they 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 want to smooth streaming of video based advertisements. That's why they use a local uh, open port for for such functionality. Okay, so let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.